TikTok, 690 million users globally. Over in the UK, it's something watched over an hour a day by 17 million users. That's just one country across the pond, but others, percentage-wise, also fall into a similar statistic. Back in July, TikTok established a $200 million creator fund to support ambitious creators who are seeking to turn content creation into their livelihoods. This all sounds great, but TubeFilter just published an article and video that disseminates the economics behind the creators. Here with his thoughts on the creator fund and how to and to break down the numbers is Sam Tall. Sam, should I give up my day job and hop on TikTok? So yes, you should definitely quit your day job. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea, sound strategy. Um, it's the perfect time. You got to get in on the ground floor. You got to hustle hard. That, uh, no, obviously yeah, well, not. Well, TikTok, so, TikTok's a new app. You know, it's just brand new, and the people are just starting to catch on. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's this it's this new kid on the block that's been around for a few years. <laughs> um, but to take it seriously, I mean, the monetization question around TikTok's been on uh, a lot of people's minds all year. Um, and, and there's some, been some recent insight about how they're handling that and how they're making that in, you know, as we close out the year and as we approach the next year, um, they've obviously been in the limelight a lot with people staying home and with people making new content. And there's been a lot of cool, like family stuff and commentary, and it's very UGC friendly. It's amazing. The kind of content, it's definitely a very different vibe than YouTube, which is now pretty stayed in its ways around vloggers and lifestyle content. But the monetization on TikTok, um, it was looking like it was going to take a very similar attack to Facebook. Um, for those who don't know, the way that YouTube monetization works is primarily based on AdSense. So for ads that run on YouTube, a ratio of those revenues get paid out to the creator uh, of the video where the uh, ads are appearing. And if there's music in that video, that revenue is probably going to the label or rights owner instead of the creator of that video uh, for copyright reasons. Facebook is different. Facebook, in order to accomplish some goals around monetization and clearing up rights-related issues, um, decided that they were going to set aside a pool of rev a pool of money, and then of that pool, they were going to prorate out to rights owners and content creators. Uh, the content creator side of that's really new this year. The rights owners part, the music rights owners part, was something that happened, I think, a year, maybe two years ago. Um, and so it's been limited. Obviously, Facebook has continued to grow, but that pool of money has not. And so the exposure may be going up, but the actual you know, revenue per thousand views is going down. TikTok is now in the unenviable position of having to figure out how to do this themselves and how to compensate creators to continue to grow, continue to compete with other platforms that do compensate, especially with music, because there's copyright related issues, not just creator retention problems. Uh, some data out of the out of uh, Europe and some of the user bases out there suggest that it's in the two to four cents per uh, thousand views range. By context, uh, YouTube is more like uh, two to four dollars. Um, but of course, you got to keep in mind that YouTube content tends to be on average five to ten minutes. On TikTok, it's uh, you know usually around 15 seconds, maybe 30 or 60 if it's a longer one. So it's a very different consumption speed. Just like with Facebook videos, the sharing is super high, the views are super high. So it makes sense that the thousand views are a little bit cheaper. Um, it's also a smaller platform and a little less uh, friendly to advertisers right now. Here's where we hit the problems. They're still treating music from that sort of pooled and prorated basis. I recently got some royalties in from TikTok for an artist that I work with and, and had put out their music on TikTok. It, some like 200 million views or something like that for a few hundred dollars. I mean, I don't understand how that's like at all logical. It doesn't seem like that's where we you know ought to be. For a platform that's based around music, it should be a lot higher and it's a little frustrating. Couple this with the fact that when I shared this information in Artist Managers Connect, Everybody had a different experience. There is no standardization here. It's like, is it the label that gets the deal, the distributor that gets the deal? Like, who's cutting the deal that determines what the pro rate is? Because I love the distributor that I worked with, but did they have a shitty deal? Like, is that gonna mean that like, I'm always gonna get underpaid for TikTok versus other people who are on different distributors? How is that fair? At least with Spotify, you can kind of guess roughly three to four tenths of a cent. It's pretty easy to predict now. And with Apple, it's even easier because there's no ads on Apple Music, so it's all premium revenue, and you can kind of guarantee what the per stream rate is going to be based on the users and based on the revenues reported. 
TikTok, we're not there yet. And, you know, frankly, with how prolific the music is, it should be compensated better. Now that's obvious. And obviously the, the promotional value of it is, is evident. We have stars uh, emerging off of TikTok just for their music going viral in, in challenges and trends and all kinds of stuff. I don't want to diminish the value of that. But that's also true on every other platform. The sharing of music happens all over the place. It happened on YouTube, and that was one of YouTube's principal problems to solve, you know, 10 years ago. Hence, you know, we get to a place where the labels are kind of holding out and the labels are, you know, doing takedowns. And then it happens with video too, and then Viacom sues. And then we have the advent of content ID. And now everyone's kind of like pretty hunky dory with YouTube, even though that their, you know, revenue versus Spotify is a lot lower. The volume of views is a lot higher. And so we're still talking about a platform that pays out over a billion dollars a year to rights owners. That's great. It could be better, but it's great. TikTok, you know, it's not even a billion dollars for video creators. It's even less than that for music creators. And I just, I don't understand what gives. And uh, I want to put this out into the ether. If you have your stuff being distributed, make sure it's on TikTok. Otherwise, People are just going to rip and upload your sounds anyway. If your music gets any traction, it's going to end up on TikTok whether you want it to or not. So you might as well be in market. And then once you're in market, you can start to fight for a little bit of a change and, you know, advocate for a little bit of a higher royalty rate, um, especially if you're, you know, not predisposed to making content and kind of pushing the engine yourself. Um, it's unfair for you to be locked out of this ecosystem.